This year, a group of students and teachers from Robert F. Hall and St. Augustine Secondary Schools embarked on the North-South Awareness Project to Hinoquao, Nicaragua for a life-changing experience of solidarity and social justice. Following our last exams of semester one, we arrived at the airport for our flight to beautiful yet impoverished Nicaragua. After six hours in the air, we landed in Nicaragua and made our way to Casa Canadiense, where we would begin our journey. We didn't know each other very well or the country we were visiting, but in short time, we all became very close friends. On our first morning in Nicaragua, instead of doing a typical tour of Managua, the capital city, we did an alternative tour. We went around the city looking at the contrast between the rich areas and the poor areas. Sometimes they are right beside each other, and sometimes they are blocked by security and barbed wire fences or cement walls. One second you're in a neighborhood with metal shacks, and the next second you're in a neighborhood with huge houses and three cars parked out front. We met Yamilet, an inspiring community leader and activist who grew up and worked in the dump. Her story of how she began to help the other people in the dump to find alternative ways to live and to better their lives. Able to drive near La Chureca, the city dump, and see the small homes built by the government for families that used to live in La Chureca. Through the struggles and work of inspiring leaders and people like Yamilet, La Chereca is changing and people are living with greater dignity and possibilities for a better future. One of the many activities in which we participated was a visit to Podcast for Peace. Podcast for Peace is an organization in Managua dedicated to teaching local youth about technology and the importance of speaking out. After an introduction to podcasts and watching an inspirational video from one of their students, we had a chance to play with the local children. During the short period of time, we all befriended the children and we had lots of fun. After our time at Podcast for Peace, we traveled to Esperanza en Acción, which is a fair trade artisan shop. Esperanza en Acción means hope and action, and this shop supports women artisans, giving them a fair and just wage for their work. Yemilet shared with us the stories of some of the women and the beautiful artwork that they create. We had an opportunity to see the amazing artwork and purchase gifts while supporting women through fair trade. We were really able to witness hope and action at work. <laughs> While we were in the market, we got the chance to explore more of the Nicaraguan culture and way of life. We were given 50 cords, which is the equivalent of two US dollars, to buy groceries for a family that would last for a week. To provide, we even needed to barter for better prices. This task proved daunting, and we grasped a sense of what life is like trying to feed a family and the extent of poverty faced in Nicaragua. In order to understand how to resolve an issue, you need to examine the roots of the problem. That is why we had Anne Setright come and speak to us about the history and politics of Nicaragua. 1997, but the Constitution of 
1897, it's called the, the, the Majestual. It's, the, it's the, the best constitution, and it's the one that makes... She put into context for us the political, economic, and historical issues and challenges that face the people of Nicaragua. One of the biggest lessons we learned is that money can't fix all the problems, problems that have taken centuries to become what they are today. We were able to visit one of Nicaragua's many famous volcanoes. It was easy to see how huge the volcano was even through all the sulfur. The atmosphere was a bit humid, but the view was amazing. Volcanic rock covered areas all the way down to the numerous bodies of water. Nicaragua was truly the land of lakes and volcanoes. We are here. Prior to attending Mass in Bata Olonorte, we were given a tour around the back of the church. We listened to the history of several murals painted in remembrance of significant events or with symbolic meaning. It was neat to see a section of the altarpiece that had been recreated in our school by students who went to Nicaragua a couple of years ago. As well as celebrating Mass, this church is also a community centre, where people are taught life skills and cultural arts. On our four-hour bus ride to the community of Hino Cuau, we stopped in the historical city of Leon for lunch. Then Angela, the community leader who hosted our school in 2005, met with us in the barrio as we visited the former project. That year, we had helped build a basketball court and clean up a sports field. The community center is now helping people get an education, learn life skills, and art and culture activities. It was wonderful to see how the contributions of years ago continue to grow and develop by ongoing generosity by so many people. We were able to see the fruits of solidarity at work. When we first arrived in the village of Hino Kuao, our future host families, along with the rest of the community, welcomed us in with open arms and warm hearts. Le dice? We were all overjoyed to finally end our built-up anticipation and meet the families we were to spend the next unforgettable week with. The day after we arrived in Hino Kuao, we started to work. Alongside of us were our new friends and family. We soon fell into a rhythm. Each morning, work would start around 7 o'clock and end at 11.30. We were eagerly looking forward to helping a new school classroom rise. Everyone took turns using the shovels, pickaxes, and wheelbarrows, making sure we all had regular breaks to stay hydrated. Everybody from the community worked with us. The children were very eager to help and worked as efficiently as we did. The mornings were cool compared to the rest of the day, but they still seemed very hot. During the time we worked, we dug the foundation of the classroom leveling the ground. We took turns, worked together, helped each other, laughed together, and created memories. Once we finished for the day, we had the opportunity to eat lunch and spend time with our families. Most days after this valued and cherished time, we would head out as a group to partake in multiple activities concerning education and cultural exchange. One evening, a small group of senior members of the community spoke to us about the history of the church in Hinyokwao. Afterwards, we attended a service at their church where we read from the gospel and sung together with the community. The songs were energetic and full of life. I would say here is all uh, I live in Hinyokwao. I love to speak English. Uh, I... 
During one afternoon, we spent time with students who were learning to speak English. We were also able to teach each other in a Spanish-English exchange. We all found it to be a very fun learning activity and definitely enjoyed every moment. Then by the help of translators, we were able to share about the struggle Canadian youth face and learn about the challenges facing Nicaraguan youth. This was truly an experience of exchange and solidarity. One day, our families hiked with us to show us a nearby river. It was beautiful and refreshing just to look at. The water wound around a series of grassy hills. Walking alongside the river kept spirits high and time seemed to pass quickly. We visited a woman's cashew cooperative. Through the cooperative, women are given an opportunity to move from great poverty to co-ownership of a cashew farm, where they do everything from planting, harvesting, and finally processing and selling the cashews. Many of us saw for the first time how cashews grow. At the processing plant, we were able to purchase cashews to bring back home with us and support the women in sustainable cooperative farming. The children of Hino Kral were our greatest teachers on this experience. They possess a light so great, all circumstances are seen as opportunities for growth. They seemed unstoppable, approaching life without fear, overcoming barriers and challenges. In many instances, they are the caregivers with great responsibilities at a young age. They have much to teach us. They inspired us to persevere and conquer, not only for ourselves, but for the good that we can provide to countless others. The children gifted us with hope and accepted and loved us unconditionally. They remind us to find happiness in and through each other. On our final night in the community, we celebrated all our hard work spent on the project. And we pray, blessed are you, Lord, our God. You are the creator of the stars and all creation. During this night, we had the opportunity to watch the community members dance and put on a show. All the students also performed a mashup of songs and a poem for them. Although this was a wonderful night, we all had the thought at the back of our minds that we would be leaving the next morning and were required to say our final goodbyes. The time to say goodbye to our families and the community finally came. This was one of the most difficult moments over the course of our experience. In such a short period of time, Despite the language barrier, we all grew really close to our families.
We are truly grateful for all those who helped make this amazing experience possible. Athens students, 